Hi everyone, thanks so much for stopping by the channel. Today we are out here with the hen house and we have the most important fall chore of the season to get done today. We are going to do a deep clean of the hen house. It is so important for the health of the chickens that they go into the next season with a good clean house. Now, generally I do a sweep down and a good clean out and fresh bedding once a week, but in the fall, I like to go in and just scrub all the surfaces and get in there and make sure that they go into the winter with a clean house. They're gonna be spending more time in the house over the winter. In the summertime, they're they're not in there at all. They're out first thing in the morning. They don't go in until bedtime, and which is dark for them, and they're out the next morning. So they're not in there very much, all from spring all of the way until it gets cold. And um, with winter coming, they will spend more time in there. And you know, chickens like to dust bathe, and they will come out here, and they will get super dusty, and then they will go in there, and they will brush their feathers and dust goes everywhere. And also while they're in there, they're scratching and they're creating more dust, so it's really dusty. This is a chore that this year I've put off for a couple of weeks. It should have been done a couple of weeks ago, but we've just had rainy, wet, cold weather. We really didn't have a fall here in Michigan. We were in the 90s in October, which is rare. And then we just went to 40s with rain and wind for days. So. Uh, it's just been a season of extreme weather here for us this year, something we weren't expecting. Normally this time of the year we have long, beautiful, sunny 60, 65 degree days and for me that is the perfect outdoor working weather and we didn't get it this year so again uh, this has been put off so it's usually not this bad but uh, I was saving it because I was waiting for a nice day and I knew I was going to do the deep cleaning. So. We're going to get in there and get to work. Okay, here's the tools I'm going to be using today. So we're going to start with a scrub brush. We're going to have some rubber gloves. We're going to be using some Murphy's oil soap. And we're going to be using some Mrs. Meyers Clean Day dish soap. I'll also be using some vinegar and water. That's just plain white vinegar. I will be using my five herb spray. I make that out of essential oils. Uh, we'll be using a Swiffer. I have some refills back here. We have a brush and we have a couple of scrapers, always handy, and we have some paper towel and a bunch of rags and a couple towels as well. For the bigger tools, I will show you those too. For the larger tools, we will definitely be using a bucket. We will use a broom, a rake, a mop, broom and a shovel in the you see the shovel in the back those are the larger tools that we'll be using so let's go ahead and uh, do a tour now this outside area you can see here is a wall and this wall is framed out but it just has chicken wire all through here and then we have the storm door here and then over here we have another wall and then we have a stand over here. I have this dresser here and I keep their supplies in it. So this area is a little under three feet and that is where I keep my things. Okay, so now we're on the inside and I'm gonna show you some of the areas that I wanted to talk about uh, and concentrate on while I'm cleaning. Now this window here, it opens this way and it doesn't open very far. So there's a rail across the top and they like to sit up there. And so it gets really dusty up there. I don't know if you can see if I bring you closer. Yeah, see how dirty that window is. And with the days being shorter and it getting dark earlier, we definitely want to make sure they have enough sunlight in here. So we're going to make sure that that window is clean. And then somebody, um, I just moved their roof bars, like I said, and somebody sits here and poos there. So we need to get that cleaned up really good and disinfected. And then... Here is what I was talking about with their nesting boxes, especially on the bottom shelves. They come in with dirty feet and they hop up there on their boxes and you can see just how dirty that is from their feet. And over here on this wall, and I do not know how it happens because the roost bar is pretty far away, but someone has hit the wall with doo-doo and we have got to get that cleaned up. So um, we're just going to go ahead and get cleaning and tackle all of these problems. I know you probably can't see it through the camera, but there is just a lot 
of cobwebs up there at the ceiling. Just a ton of cobwebs. So we're gonna get it all brushed down and cleaned up. I start my cleaning process with giving everything a spray down. This is my five herb blend. And these are essential oils that all have properties that clean and disinfect. They're antiviral, antibacterial, and antiseptic. So they are gonna help really uh, not just remove the dirt, but they're going to sterilize the area. And I'm gonna let everything soak. Now under the roost bars on the floor is, you know, of course, where all the droppings go and it is wet. And so normally I would clean from the top down. That is the normal cleaning procedure. And I just have the tarp out back where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this out first because it is wet and uh, getting it out is gonna make the coop smell better while I'm cleaning. It's also going to let me see the condition of the floor so I can better schedule how I'm going to clean today. And it is also going to uh, let the floor be dry and I'm not gonna be stepping in this and smushing it into the floor and making more work for myself. And so I'm just going to empty all this wet stuff out first. Next, I take this plastic shrub rake. I love this rake because all of this material is dry. They usually just uh, have droppings in one or two areas. So this goes out very quickly and it just is so much easier because it's powerful enough to just scoop it out. And because it is plastic, as it drags across the floor, it helps remove anything that's stuck on the floor. Once I've got all the dry bedding out of the coop, then I come back with the broom and really get into the nooks and crannies and the corners and just get it all swept out and make sure that um, I've done that. And now I'm going to stop here and look at these adorable eggs. I just love the eggs. <laughs> the girls are so wonderful to give us eggs. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, while I'm here, clean out the nesting boxes and uh, go ahead and give them a pre-treat. Uh, I do clean the nesting boxes quite often, but today I'm going to give them a deep scrub. The next step is to take the shovel and just very lightly go over the floor. You don't have to put a lot of pressure into this. It just helps remove everything that's stuck on the floor. And you can see how much more was removed. Now I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down. And I really like using this duster because it helps trap all the dust and cobwebs and bugs and everything that's left behind. And I am actually allergic to dust, and yes, normally I would wear a mask while doing this. You should, in fact, wear a mask while cleaning the chicken coop because there are lots of lung infections that you can get from not doing this. I actually have all the windows and doors open, and I have the fan blowing out, so uh, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but it was still. I should have wore a mask. So if you are cleaning, you should wear a mask too. After I've got all the dust knocked down and out and I'm ready to tackle that upper window and get it clean, next I've added my Murphy's Oil Soap, which is a great cleaning agent for the chicken coop. It takes care of parasites and it takes care of bacteria as well. I didn't actually need the scraper because I used the pre-treat. It actually cleaned up really well. I am using the Murphy's oil soap on all the wooden surfaces. So I did get in there and get the uh, coop, uh, the nesting boxes all clean and deodorized so they are good. After I was all done with those, I moved on to the roosting bars. I started this by uh, working with the cleanest of the dirtiest first. So I wouldn't have to change the water quite so much. And the roost boxes or roost bars were not so bad after all. And uh, they were easy peasy to clean. Next, I had to tackle that wall. And this wall is not sealed and it is that pressed fiber board. So it was difficult getting into between all those fibers. And had I known in the beginning that poo would end up here, it never has before, but I definitely would have sealed this wood before I put chickens in here. So it did come very clean very quickly. It did not remove the stain, but it did come clean. After that, I just moved over to the opposite side of the coop and 
I did this roosting ladder that we made for them and that was all nice and clean. After that, I went ahead and did the wall on this side of the coop. Uh, I did all of those surfaces in the coop. I then um, cleaned the fan and moved it out and started on my side of the area. I also moved out the stand and took care of the wall and the wire behind it and got all the dust off of there. And after that was finished, I moved on to the dresser and wanted to make sure it was nice and clean. So I'm using the five oil and the Mrs. Myers and scrubbing it down and making sure that it is all clean and dust free and ready to uh, do a, I'm also going to do a supply inventory just to make sure that I have all their supplies that they need and uh, take in anything that may freeze. Now it's time to sweep and you can see that there's water on the floor and it's kind of a little of a bonus because while you're sweeping you're kind of clean at the same time. After I've swept this time I'm going to use the vinegar and water. This is just white vinegar and I'm going to use my little scraper and make sure that I've been able to remove anything left on the floor that wouldn't be easily wiped away when I mop. Now you can see here I have this tear on the floor and Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to patch it because it's too late in the season to replace it. And a new floor is part of the uh, coop redo that I am planning in the spring. I had hoped to get that done this year, but we had to build a run because we had a fox and coyote attack. We had several and... Um, the run took precedence over the inside the coop, of course. So now I'm just making sure that there is nothing under there so that when I lay this down, it folds completely flat and I don't want any bumps or anything that's gonna uh, cause another tear when there's pressure put on it. And I'm cleaning it really well and I'm trying to get it clean and dry now so that it will be dry when I'm ready to start the repair. So again, another sweep down, and now I'm going to start the mopping process. I'm going to use the Mrs. Myers for this, and I'm going to use these reusable, uh, this is instead of a towel, it's a reusable Swiffer, and I have an old Swiffer that I keep out here just for cleaning the coop, and it does make it go so much easier. And so I'm just going to toss some water on the floor because it's really dirty at this point, and I just need to get it really clean. So I'm going to do a, the first scrub and then I'll come back and get a clean Swiffer and another rinse down and um, wipe it down again. And so it doesn't take very much for it to come clean and that's why I really do like using the vinyl. After uh, the last wipe down, I move on to my side too and get that cleaned. Now I'm back to work on the repair. And like I said, I really love using vinyl in the coop. It protects the wooden floor underneath and it's just, as you could see, so very easy to clean. And you can see I'm not using liquid nails or anything else to, to tack this to the floor because if I did that, then it would be very hard to remove when I was done with it. So first, I'm just gonna go ahead and tape down the areas that are torn. And then I will go ahead and make a bigger patch to cover the entire area because when you're done with using linoleum, you can just pull it out and put a fresh piece back in and it's just easy peasy when you're cleaning the coop. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and duct tape this and hope that this lasts until spring. I'm making that larger patch also because if we do get a warm day in the wintertime, I am always happy to come out here and repeat this process for the girls. I like to keep the coop clean, as I said, and doing this um, as many times as I can, even in the winter time, is important. Like I said, I will do the first few steps every week, you know, shovel it out, rake it out, and sweep it out, and um, wipe up as much as possible. But I don't get the coop really wet in the wintertime if it's not going to be a nice day and if it cannot be dry by the time the girls have to go back in. And with the really short days and the really cold weather, that is really hard to do. But sometimes we get into the 40s and I will definitely do that. After my patch is done, 
it's time to just start putting down the bedding. I use from Tractor Supply, I use the large flake. And I don't get too perfect here because the girls really like to do it themselves. I had to learn that. I would make their nesting boxes oh so perfect and they would just come in and make them how they want them. So I just kind of get it in there and I make sure it's in the areas where it needs to be the most absorbent. And then they just come in and they put it the way they want it to be. And it's fun to watch them build their nest. So there we have it. We have all of it all clean. Every item that was on our list, we tackled the window, the dust, the cobwebs, the nesting boxes. We got the poo off the wall. The roost bars are clean. It smells amazing in here. It is so fresh and clean and bright. And so they are really going to enjoy coming into their coop and having it so fresh and clean and hopefully getting them through as long as possible throughout the upcoming season. So there you have it. It's a nice clean coop. It's a very deep clean, very fresh, very clean for just for them. guys that's it for this video thanks so much for coming along i hope you liked the video if you did please give it a thumb up if you're new please go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell so that you can catch the rest of our videos and come along on this journey with us i hope you learned something about raising chickens and i've answered your questions if you have any other questions or comments or the ways that you clean your hen house go ahead and leave them in the description box below and i look forward to seeing y'all in the next video bye